Hi, Kat. All right. Yep, another biology professor. And uh, so we're just going to try to roll through on uh, three main messages today. Uh, the first one is graduation requirements, which matters to everybody, right? How do you get through here and get a degree? And uh, um, something we'll emphasize is something that's available on your student account called the Degree Progress Report that shows you how far you've gone, like that, okay? Second thing we'll talk about is finding and using learning resources. So instructors in college are really good at teaching what you need to learn there's a big variety of a structure's ability to teach you how to learn. And there's some tremendous resources here, especially focused on something called the Learning Commons, which is also called the Tutoring Center, teaching you, helping you how to learn. And then the last thing we'll talk about is uh, opportunities outside of classes, on campus and off campus, to tremendously strengthen the value of your college degree and tremendously help you decide what you want to do like that, okay? So here's the key concept of this whole uh, meeting, and that is uh, the number one thing you've been taught in school is to sit down and be quiet. And the number one thing that we want you to transition to in college is to do the opposite, to be asking, looking, finding, learning, like that. Uh, and that's just hugely significant, and it'll be throughout this uh, that we want to talk about those ideas, okay? All right, so when you do that, when you get up, move around, talk to your neighbors, you start to find out opportunities that are not sitting there in front of you, waiting for you to bump into them. So here's just a couple of quick examples of some just fantastic opportunities for bio majors at USF. Here's the first one. If you're interested in marine biology, there is a uh, research lab up the coast in Booth Bay Harbor called Bigelow Labs, internationally famous research center, and uh, 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 biology professor Rachel Leslie Ratcher, who's a marine biologist herself, is married to one of the marine biologists at Bigelow and knows all about it, and they have a program where you could live up there for a semester and study marine sciences, and it's just as prestigious as a place as you could get to like that. You wouldn't, it's, it's just not listed easily to find anywhere, but if you talk to classmates, someone will hear of it, talk to Rachel or other faculty, advisors, stuff like that, they'll tell you, oh, if you're interested in marine sciences, that's a nutty opportunity. It's just a fantastic place to be. Here's one of our students that uh, participate in it, and it's just cranked in ahead with a career, you know, job in Maine type stuff. Here's a, a message that Chris sent just last week. Might be interested in veterinary medicine. A veterinarian around here is looking for students to help in their clinic. You know, just like that. It's an opportunity that is never listed on a website because these are dynamic opportunities that are there and, and you want to be talking to people like Chris and uh, uh, again, classmates and stuff like that. Here's something that I help organize. It's uh, during each school year we have about a dozen students from USM working in the Research Institute down in Scarborough run by Maine Health or Maine Medical Center. And uh, Liam is up there, he's just started it. And uh, we've got you know, many, many students and it's a fantastic opportunity to advance in uh, interest in biomedical research, biomedicine, like that. And uh, this is just a list of what USM students did who did the internship and finished college. So, you know, just a tremendous track record of taking advantage of these opportunities that are some on campus, some off campus, and really building a college degree of value, both in identifying something you want to spend time doing and advancing toward that goal, okay? Specific professors have specific information like that. Rachel, Dave, Chris, all of them, everybody has some information that they could share with you. And it's about getting up, moving around, asking questions, taking notes, and it's like a course that you're taking and it's your career, like that, okay? 
So again, it's the opposite of you know, just signing up and just waiting for what assignment is to be handed in at what gate, like that, okay? So in that context of actually seeking stuff out, um, I wanna talk about these three categories and all of them involve you being active, like that. It's a nice progression, uh, the first one, figuring out what the requirements are and mapping out your plan for graduating, like that, okay? So, in that context, you're doing it with help. And at USM, you already have three advisors, and uh, some of them are here already. So, Kim is a professional advisor, and Kim meets with every student when they first arrive at USM to get them started. Whether they're a new student or a transfer student, they meet with Kim. And um, one of the things that we all show students and help them get uh, going is on their, in their student account, you already have something called a degree progress report. And once you declare a major, the de degree progress report is formatted for that major, and it shows you what you've taken and what remains to be uh, done. And um, when it's time to graduate, what you do is you apply to graduate in your final semester, and then your um, uh, uh, material is reviewed, your transcripts are looked at, and then especially this degree progress report is looked at. And so right now, and all the way through USM, you can look at that any time and see how you're doing, and you'll be able to see when you're done. Sometimes there are mistakes in the degree progress report, and if you find one, you should talk to your uh, faculty advisor or professional advisor and get that corrected because that's a key piece of how you graduate. So some returning students are working on graduating this year, and so they're very focused on it. Some new students are starting to build toward that now, and they can start paying attention to their degree progress report. Um, the uh, key thing is that the year you start at USM is the year that the rules are set for you. And those rules are reflected in your degree progress report. And so that's an electronic version of showing you what's required for you. Sometimes requirements change. A new requirement will be made for new students, but your requirements don't change. That can be confusing. And here's a for example, and that is, let me just go back to this to show you this example. So, Let's just look at this. In the degree progress report, it follows two categories of requirements. General education requirements, which at USM are called the core. So you have to take a class in art and writing and so forth like that. And then your major, which is uh, in biology and in biology we pick concentrations. So here's for transfer students and returning students that are almost done. There's a general education requirement that those should, students should take about in their last semester, and it's called the capstone. And it takes a minute to explain the capstone. The capstone is a general education core requirement that's fulfilled within the major. So when you take a capstone within biology, you're actually fulfilling the general education requirement major. Some of those courses can also count towards specific requirements in your biology major. So sometimes you can get a kind of a double dipping effect of having a count for both general education capstone, but also a specific requirement in your biology major. And that's something that is uh, important to appreciate as you navigate toward finishing up. Then there's a new requirement uh, called WRI3, new this year. So if you're a first year student, you're eventually gonna have to take a WRI3 course. Everybody has to take it to graduate. If you're a returning student, you don't have that requirement because you started at an earlier year when it didn't exist. If you're a transfer student, you do have the requirement because you arrived the year it went into effect. Our goal in the biology department is to have all of the capstone courses count also as a WRI3. So you could take that together. But it's new, and those aren't all in place yet. So if you're a transfer student who's about to finish up and needs to take a capstone and a WRI3, it's gonna be really important for you to talk to your advisor 
about making sure you get credit toward those, okay? Like that, okay? So that's a, just a specific example of the challenges of navigating these requirements. Let me just uh, scroll back here just to show you this. So final semester, students apply to graduate. One of the key things that is looked at is that degree progress report. So get, start getting familiar with that, correcting errors, stuff like that. Another thing to mention is for transfer students, you got a transfer credit report and that is partly based on a computer looking at your transfer courses. It's possible at any time while they're at USM, a transfer student might find another course that seems like they should be getting credit for at USM. And if you see that, talk to your faculty advisor or professional advisor and they can help you get to determine if that could get transfer credit and then it would show up in your degree progress report that way. Okay, um, and so the, um, um, again, the degree progress report is the key thing. This is one image of what the degree progress report looks like. It's got the courses, uh, this is a specific student, so I tried to black out their grades, but specific student got these and, and got these credits as a transfer student. Here within the biology department, you can see it shows, oh, not satisfied. So a requirement's not satisfied, they'll need to finish that requirement. That's the sort of printed version of the degree progress report. This is one way that it looks online. And um, you can uh, uh, click on buttons and see expanded versions of what courses fit those requirements and what you can take like that. In your final semester, the degree progress report already includes the courses you're taking to say it looks like you're gonna be able to be done this semester like that. And it's up to you to appreciate that, that you uh, can get advice, but the bottom line is it's up to you to make sure you know the rules and you see that you fulfill them, okay? Like that. So um, now we'll talk some a little bit about these concentrations in biology. So the first thing to say is that all biology majors pick a concentration, one of these concentrations is what people are pursuing. The first one we call general biology, and that is the biology major. It's the biology major that was here all along, and it's the one that's most typical at all colleges and universities. It would just be called the bio major, except maybe about 10 years ago, we created these two concentrations. General biology is called a concentration, but it is the original major, and the one that is most common on campuses. We may do concentrations to focus on students that are especially interested in uh, uh, medicine and biomedical research, so human biology, and another concentration in biotechnology because there are uh, uh, some good jobs in Maine in biotech. And uh, in addition to those, uh, at USM, we have some teachers that are, uh, that are going to become uh, science teachers in uh, uh, high school, and they are completing a bio major, so we have a set of them. And then we have a non-degree program in pre-pharmacy, and uh, a pretty special track where a student would either get a degree here or even after just two years apply to a pharmacy school and complete their college and pharmacy degrees at that pharmacy school. We have a degree uh, articulation agreement with the University of New England School of Pharmacy where they will automatically select some students that uh, meet certain criteria to accept them into pharmacy at UNE. And the reason that exists is because we've had some really good students go to pharmacy school at UNE, and they were excited to make that connection with us. So, um, uh, different pathways. And um, uh, just to talk briefly about the different pathways, uh, the human biology pathway is stacked up with more chemistry. And so you want to be mindful of that. A lot of our students pick human biology because they think, oh, I definitely want to go into medicine, right? But if you're taking intro chem right now or already took in high school and you don't, don't like chemistry, you could get a general biology degree. It's like a biology major everywhere and you wouldn't have to take as much chemistry to get into many paths into uh, the field of medicine like that. And so that's a big difference and it's a really significant difference. The students that take 
human bile versus general bile, the students that take human bile have to take two more lecture courses and two more labs than the general biology students and their upper level uh, chemistry courses. So it's really important to pay attention to that. The biotechnology uh, concentration has a lot of chemistry in it also, and it also has some opportunities to get more research experience, more hands-on experience to be more employable as, as when you're finished with um, your degree. Um, I mentioned something about the teacher education track. I just want to mention to all of you that we're psyched for anybody that's interested in teaching. You could do the track or you could become interested in teaching after you graduate. In any case, we have some opportunities for you to get some hands-on experience in a classroom uh, while you're still a college student to explore that. And uh, there's a crisis in uh, science teaching in high schools and, uh, and, and K through 12. And so we're super psyched to be supportive of students that are interested in that. This uh, opportunity that I just showed you, uh, you can make connections talking with me or email um, uh, this statewide coordinator, Sarah Sparks. And so there's a variety of opportunities to strengthen your path toward a degree that would take you into teaching, like that, okay? Um, then uh, the pre-farm program, I also mentioned that briefly. That's described on the biology department website. And also, you want to talk to your advisor to talk to them about how you're going to go on that pathway. Because again, it could be a two-year non-degree program here or a four-year degree program here. Um, there's a form to change majors. And that same form is used to change the concentration. If you want to shift concentration from the biology major, you want to do that. You don't have to hurry to do it, but you want to do that because your degree progress report is based on what you've declared for your major, your concentration like that. Okay? So uh, there's a lot of information on the biology department website about those concentrations. Right? I'm just talking about it briefly here because there's uh, some online resources and the biology department website is spectacular. And then also a big message here is to take further questions to advisors, face-to-face -face advisors like that. Here's just an example of something on the Bio Department website that just cleverly crafted to show you in brief what the requirements are for the different concentrations and the different pre-farm and um, um, secondary ed teachers. So, to, to tackle that, you want to get active, like we did in, in the uh, room here, and that involves looking at the web, but also talking to people. And you have these three advisors. And uh, just briefly introduce that idea. And the first is that you have a professional advisor that's going to guide you up to about 60 credits. So the first couple of years of college, that person is especially helpful. One of the reasons is because a lot of students uh, change majors early in their college career. They're undecided, and they're just trying to choose a, pick a major, right? And uh, professional advisors are really well versed at that, at helping you navigate into a major and get moving toward a major. Also, moving toward getting a balance of completing the general education requirements while you start exploring and, and, and getting into a, a major. And so Kim is here. And she's, I think, the number one professional advisor for bio majors. Uh, there are a couple other folks in the advising center that also help with advising bio majors. We have a lot of them. And um, like I said uh, at the start, um, many of you already met Kim because uh, uh, professional advisors will meet with students right when they're coming to USF, like that. So part of that is just to share with you that I mentioned that a lot of students pick biology major when they come to college because they had it as a class in high school and they like it, right? And at a college or university like USM, there are actually a lot of majors that are overlapping. And so I just, uh, this would not be all of them. This is just a list for you to consider about other majors and what's the best fit for you. And you know, we're not trying to hang on to bio majors, right? Uh, we want you to have the most fulfilling college experience you can. And so we can talk to you about it. Another possibility is bio major and getting a minor in one of these other uh, programs like that. And uh, it's a lot. And uh, Kim and other professional advisors are uh, going to be able to answer some of those questions. 
if you have questions about other majors, um, it's best to go to the professors in that major and talk to them about the program and ask them about options, ask them about what kind of opportunities there are, uh, talk about jobs after college or more, you know, school after college and what that would take you to, like that, okay? So faculty advisors you can talk to right now. So if you're a first year student, you have a faculty advisor in the biology department, it's one of the professors in the biology department, and you can talk to them right now and it's good to talk to them. Again, the professional advisors are set to try to help you best with early college courses. What faculty advisors are set to talk with you best about is opportunities, right? Like that semester up at Bigelow Labs in Booth Bay Harbor, or the internship at Maine Health Instant Research, or working with a veterinarian. And it's really important for every student including first year students to talk to their faculty advisor about what they're interested in in order to start thinking and dreaming and planning what their time at USM will be like. You probably know that in the United States now, lots of students transfer. Some of them, is, it's a planned transfer. You start at a community college and go to a four year college to save some money. Lots of students transfer because they're not happy. And one way to get invested in your time here at USM is to start mapping out opportunities that you want to do. It turns out there are lots at USM. It's in a really good spot for that. And that would help you a lot if, say, you're a first year student and you have a lousy roommate, you know, that, that you could get through this semester because you're looking ahead to the second, third, fourth year in college and stuff you're going to get to do like that. Uh, professors are standing still while the students go by. So professors have a lot of experience. To uh, us, each of you is tremendously unique, yet you have interests that we're familiar with. Oh, dental school, right? I've known some students that were pre-dental students, and these are some things they did. All professors are like that. And you can talk to your faculty advisor, but it's actually a mistake to emphasize faculty advisor because you can talk to any professor, anytime. And you're, you know, you have to be nice to them, but you're paying their salary, so you know, they're a resource like that. All across campus. Yep. All right. Next one is a career advisor. We have one for the all the biology majors, and in fact our entire college, there's one. So that person is not a specialist in helping you get into medical school or grad school. But Stacy Stewart in the Career Center Hub has lots of resources. One thing they're especially good is at exploring. So what does that mean? So students can first check out opportunities and sometimes they will shadow a dentist, spend a couple afternoons in a dentist's office like that, find out if they like it or not. Yeah, and uh, the Career Center Hub is great for exploring. Then students start to gravitate toward a specific career interest. And in science majors, it's really significant to start gaining experience outside of the course classroom in those to build a stronger degree that will make you competitive for a future job or future school. Probably the situation where that's most familiar is students who want to go into medical school. In addition to getting good grades, they have, they have to do a bunch of stuff outside, get some experience in a clinic, do some volunteer work, maybe some research, stuff like that. Build up um, a, a, a lot of experiences so they're competitive, uh, so they're ready to go to medical school. That's true to a great extent for any, any area in science, all of us in here, okay? So Stacy's great. Uh, she's been here uh, for a while. She's just got a lot of resources. Uh, but don't limit yourself to thinking the Career Center Hub is a one-stop shop. You really want to reach out and make connection. Another unofficial advice you have that's super valuable is your classmates. That's why we try to make connections here today, right? First-year student who's interested in medicine can, can meet a graduating senior who's interested in medicine and be like, well, what did you do at USM, right? Like that. The, the super valuable opportunity to make connections in classes and between classes like that, okay? In that context, we like student clubs in the biology department. All the students' clubs were really hammered during the pandemic and they're all going to come back. 
like that. And what's the purpose of a student club? The one I just described. The opportunity, it's, it's fun and fr friendship building, but it's also professional career building where you can network and make connections like that. So we have a biology club, and again, the biology club is just getting started again. The fact the advisor is Rachel Lassie Rasher. If you're interested in it, send Rachel an email and say, I'd like to be in a biology club. Do whatever you want, like that. Then we have two uh, pre health profession student clubs. So anybody that's interested in healthcare careers of any kind are welcome in both those clubs. And there was just an email sent this morning explaining the two clubs and how we want students to participate in both and why we have two and how awesome that is. Um, they are getting started. Uh, take a look at the email you got this morning if you're interested in those clubs. And again, the purpose of that is to make connections and friendships, but also professional development like that, actual you know, career building efforts like that. I happen to be the advisor of another club, totally different club, a meditation club. If you're interested in that, let me know. All right, so graduation requirements and the structure of courses. And in doing that, you can see that it's more than just pre-registering each semester actually reaching out and understanding the courses you're taking and the course uh, path that you're on, your major and what major you're on. So second thing is uh, finding these learning resources that I mentioned at the start. And uh, we have a spectacular resource at USM uh, called the Learning Commons or the Tutoring Center. And um, there's a physical place in each library and then it's a huge online presence. And you would have gotten a lot of information, a lot of clickable information of tutorials and resources uh, to help you uh, learn. Not just tutoring after you didn't do well on an exam, but actually learning how to learn and, uh, and stepping up to you know, the, the best learning you can do, like that. I just want to show you a little bit about that. And, uh, uh, and those resources. And it's another example of you go to it. You get to those. You do the work. And it's beyond your classroom assignment. It's you trying to figure out how you learn best and to try to learn better like that, okay? And so these are, you don't need to scramble to write these down because you would have been getting stuff from this place. And uh, it's very interesting to see how sophisticated the resources are in trying to help you support you as a learner. A lot of videos to watch about that. And again, not ever gonna be a classroom assignment, but will just massively help you in classrooms, okay? And uh, so again, you know, um, you can see these are all clickable links that you would have gotten in emails from USM and from the Learning Commons, okay? Um, uh, another part of that is to become a successful learner in the Brightspace uh, classroom environment that USM uses, right? Same thing. The Learning Commons can help you navigate how to use that online resource. So here's a picture, and it's of some farmers harvesting crops in my home state of Minnesota. I grew up in a little farming town in Minnesota, and I went to kindergarten through high school in a little town of about 1,200 people, and all the people there were farmers and the farmers didn't need formal education. None of the parents of my classmates graduated from high school. They were hardworking farmers. When I was a kid growing up, American family farming was going through a big transition where it became big business for a family farm. These are big farms, thousand acre family farm like that. And I grew up in that setting I never had homework, no way, nothing like that. And when I went to college, I was uh, smart enough, but I was uh, not a good learner. I'm still not as good a learner as I think I could have been if I'd gotten to grow up in a you know, really strong school. And some of you grew, have grown up in some really strong schools and you're really strong learners. A lot of people aren't. And you might know that, you might not know that, this learning commons and these learning resources are about that, right? To help me try to figure out how to learn, how to study, how to spend my time studying effectively to learn as much as I could to do as well as I could. And so 
We're super psyched. I'm super psyched to help you on that as well. I mentioned before that instructors are really good at teaching you what to learn, but really just don't have the resources, the training about very much about how to learn. And a lot of us need in college to really become better learners. So that's another big message for us today. Uh, another resource is the Disability Services Center. I just have a couple slides about that. Some students have accommodations to make adjustments for the length of the time or the setting that they take exams and so forth. That's a resource. And the reason I want to mention, I'm just going to scroll through these a little bit, just a couple of slides on this, because the real reason I want to mention that is that it's another example of actually standing up and doing stuff, because this is a slide they have. There's a big transition from high school to college. In high school, uh, students that would, could use a accommodation are helped, are proactively helped. There are staff that come and find them to help them and schedule things. In college, the resources are there, but the students have to go. So it's another really good example where um, it's not just about sitting down and being quiet, but actually discovering what resources are on campus and how strong they are and how much you're paying for them. So you should use them if you can, like that, okay? So last piece, and the last piece is really what I would think uh, is the most important thing to talk about and the most important thing to talk about this idea of getting up and going to find stuff. And that's the thing I really love to talk to students about because you can just greatly increase the quality of your college education by finding these opportunities, right? I listed the success that those former interns had that were at that Maine Health Institute research, right? A bunch of them, medical school, grad school, good jobs, good jobs in Maine, right? If you wanna get a job in Maine, this is a good school to be at because we're focused on getting you those uh, internship experiences that will make you competitive when you graduate. If you graduate with coursework, that's really not enough to get a really good job. You really need to get hands-on experiences uh, and, and like a re letter recommendation from a setting like that to be really competitive like that. It's interesting though that in setting up this uh, presentation, I realized that the stuff I've talked to you about up till now is very much a thing where it's you actively getting it, right? And so what I've talked about so far could be thought of as you getting active and getting the courses, the major, the learning skills, and you're building up to this piece of finding opportunities for internships and checking out shadowing opportunities and getting some experiences in career paths that you're interested in. Both to find it and then to build it so you're competitive. And I just have a couple slides on this because it's so open-ended and it requires your interaction with your advisors, classmates, people out in the community, like that, okay? So science majors should get this hands-on experience. It, it, it can't be required, it should be required because it's so valuable. USM graduates can outcompete students from Boston schools that are way more famous if they get these experiences because future employers or grad schools or medical schools and so forth, they care about that experience. And that's one thing we have uh, to our advantage is that uh, this area is just the right size for a college student. Boston is great big, uh, more opportunities, but there are long lines of students waiting for those opportunities in Boston. And this is just the right size for you to explore. Everybody's shy, you know, no matter how outgoing you are, when you start looking out for a career and talking to professionals, you know, talking to a physician, talking to a professor, 
Everybody's shy about that. It's just a really good setting for you to do that. And uh, the challenge is a lot of times, though, that is that USM students are working their way through college, and they really have tight schedules. And so we need to work with you to talk to you about how to best find an opportunity that you'll be able to do to get the you know uh, advantage of it while you're navigating your tough schedules, like challenging schedules like that. I mentioned that everybody's shy. Uh, last thing I say on this is that it's amazing that when you're a student, you hold this student status key. And what that's like is, in our society, if you ever say to anybody, I'm a student, they want to help you. If you contact a dentist and you say, I'm a student, I wonder if I could shadow, they're like, yeah, let's try to work it out, right? The example I always say is, you know, if you say you're interested in teeth, like that and you're a student everybody's like oh that's excellent you probably want to be a dentist or maybe dental hygienist that's fun and great and we can help if you say i'm interested in teeth and you're not a student people are like oh well that's weird and scary <laughs> um like body parts in fridge kind of scary where you're like yeah no i really like teeth right if you're a student you can do that and it's welcome and it feels good you can start on campus reaching out, making these connections I talked about most of the time, getting practice with that, and then start to make these harder connections where you're actually contacting somebody off campus and saying, I'm a student. And they're like, wow. Yep. You get a lot of pleasant responses in this area when you tell people you're a student. Okay? So again, remember this idea that specific professors have that help. That's one reason why we have professional advisors and faculty advisors to start sort of separating those efforts a little bit where the professional advisors are really helping students get going and get the coursework and faculty advisors can help with that too but also can start adding on some of these opportunities like a semester at Bigelow Labs and stuff like that, okay? All right, so uh, there's lots of opportunities. There's opportunities on campus, there's opportunities on, off campus. So just to mention a little bit on campus and we're almost done. And uh, there are surprising opportunities that you wouldn't see, even if you're outside. You wouldn't see that there's a greenhouse on top of this building like that. And if you're interested in plants, it's locked, but we have the key. And that's true in a lot of ways on campus, is that there are a lot of locked doors, and certain people have the key like that. And you got to reach out to discover it, and you're like, holy smoke, yeah. We've had students that have spent most of their college career in that greenhouse studying and looking at plants, you know? And they're just like, I like it up there, like that, right? Yeah, yep. Talk with any professor about that. If you happen to have federal work-study money, you could spend it by working in a library, but if you talk to professors, they need help, and you can get paid to advance toward a career interest, like working in a greenhouse, or helping out in the field, or so on and so forth. So be mindful of that. Sometimes these opportunities are volunteer opportunities just to gain the experience, like that. And then I mentioned this, this is maybe my last slide, and it's this Goldilocks story. And Portland is just the right size like that. Not too big, not too small, for you to have really good experience here. If you're a first year student, again, transfer student, it's really important to map out, you know, how, what's the, some things you're gonna get to do that are cool, like that. Um, because, uh, you know, if it's just, you know, your next chemistry exam, that's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to just have a smile on your face all the time, like that. So I'm not asking you to do an internship, right? Your courses come first, but you can start asking and finding out and making friends and stuff like that that will help with that, okay? So that's that. Um, we're going to stop here. There's five minutes left. Um, Rachel's going to answer questions. If somebody wants to hang up, if you want to jump up and take off, you're welcome to. Um, you know, this is a quick shot of stuff, but hopefully uh, inspiring for you to reach out and connect with some of the resources we talked about. Uh, if you want to hang out, I'm not in any hurry. I don't know if Rachel is, but. Um, let's just see. You can jump up and go, but if anybody has questions, um, shout them out.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can come talk to us too, one on one. And uh, super thank you for making it to this. Um, and we'll try to connect you with some other students with similar interests through Student Club or through these email lists, classes, and so forth. Yay! Great. I'm Luke. I'm going to introduce myself. Hi, Luke. In biology class. Oh, yeah, excellent. I just want to introduce myself. I'll probably be shooting you an email. Yeah, yeah, so we time. can schedule time to meet and talk oh, about stuff. Cool. That would be great. I'll yeah, email you. yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. So just send me an email, suggest a couple of times whether you want to meet in person or Zoom, and we'll schedule it. I have a lot of time. Yeah, we right, can do that. Good. Yep, cool. Thank you. Hi. Me. Hi, I'm Ryan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know you from last year. I mean, I know your name. Don't know you as well. But yeah, yeah. So um, the um, so we can schedule time to meet and talk about uh, what you're interested in. Um, and um, 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 there's a lot to say. There's just really good opportunities. And uh, one of the most amazing things to learn is that USM will be to do a biotech yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a program. That thing that I talked about at Maine Health Research Institute, that's all biotech type stuff. Yeah, it's all yeah. Oh, right. stuff. Yeah. Um, but there are plenty of other questions. If you want to hang out, like get some other questions, or just email me and we can schedule time to meet. Just suggest a couple of times, Zoom or in person, and yeah, and we can connect and we can connect multiple times. Yeah. And there are other people. Kat Miller is really great. She has research opportunities in the lab right now that would be perfect like that. So we'll talk all about okay. that and connect you with the other professors, you know, that are uh, good. Yep. Thank you so much. Yep. Hey, how's it going? Good. I wanted to hear what was going on. Yeah. Wow, you look sort of a little bit different. A little bit. I don't like know how. Adjuncting six classes this semester? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> were you in here? No, you were back up in top, there. Yeah. There was that guy up there nodding. And I was yeah. like, that guy gets it. Sense, so. that, that guy gets it. I didn't even recognize you up there. Just right. wanted to hear what was going on. Oh, yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, God. sometime we should have lunch. Yeah, absolutely. That would be good. All right, see you, Kevin. Hi. Oh, okay, let's see. We're going to meet. What's your name? Okay, yeah, yes. Hi, Kim. Yeah, thanks. That was great. Thank you for coming. Oh, we could turn the recording off. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, yes. Brit